10 o'clock, so I'm going to be muting you all. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to worship on this Baptism of Christ Sunday. Hopefully you all have um, a bowl or a cup of water somewhere close by within arm's reach um, for when we get to that part of our service where we renew our baptismal promises. Uh, just a reminder, this service is recorded. It is uploaded to our YouTube channel and GNAT TV. And uh, if you missed it or you want to refer someone to it, you can um, go to our um, website to get a link or um, go online and see it uh, in all of either of those places. Uh, oh, this is a warning that our annual meeting, the annual meeting of the Federated Church of East Arlington will take place on Sunday, January 22nd, 24th, sorry. Um, and uh, at, immediately following the service. So we'll just stay on and keep going and have the annual meeting um, via the way, same way we do our worship. And, um, but next Sunday, uh, January 17th, we will be um, staying on after the service. For anybody who would like to learn more about what went into the budget process or has questions about the budget, um, this week, Correct me if I'm wrong, Sandy. This week we will have annual reports available. Um, so if folks want to have one before the financial meeting, um, you're welcome to come by the office. I'm gonna say on Friday, if you give us the most time to get it ready, Friday or Saturday, we will stick them in, stick, I'll stick, we'll stick a stack of them in the mailbox. Um, and you are welcome to stop by and pick up an annual report. If you would like us to mail, if you're not going out and you need us to mail you one, please um, either email Sandy or I or leave, call the office and leave a voicemail message uh, and we will do that. Now, obviously, if you want it mailed, you may or may not get it in time for next, um, next Sunday's budget explanation meeting, but Allison's prepared to share the screen and show you things on the screen as she talks about them. Um, so it isn't as urgent, you probably, but for the rest of the report, you'd want that ahead of time, but you'll only need that when we have our meeting on the 24th. Um, so that's that kind of business. Um, obviously this week has been an upsetting one. Um, we're filled with lots of emotions. A few of us were talking at the beginning and I've talked with some of you um, since Wednesday and um, it's thrown folks into um, places in their thoughts and their prayers that are hard. And I want to acknowledge that and um, also acknowledge that how grateful I am that we get to be together now offering lifting up our prayers and our worship of God who is ever present and is with us through all of this. Um, and we as a nation will need to figure out where we go from here. But in the meantime, it is good that we're together and we're uh, able to sing and pray and hear the familiar stories from scripture together. At this time, we'll start our service with uh, when Jesus came to Jordan, um, Mary pre-recorded it. Uh, and so I invite Scott to now screen share when Jesus came to Jordan.
Let us pray. Word of God, speak, for your servants are listening. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over our gathering from our homes this day as you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did at the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus's day of baptism, that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Let us now offer up the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time that we bring both our joys and concerns um, to the attention of each other. And today uh, I lift up and joy the first our friends at the First Congregational Church of Manchester and their pastor, Chris Hines. I want to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all the help that was offered this week um, in the COVID community support kits that we're, we're in the process of creating. Uh, we are going to have a distribution day on January 22nd, and I'll have more information for you next week on the specifics, and it'll come out in the midweek message and all. But um, I want to thank the folks who helped us move all the boxes from the garage to Dunlap Hall and then some of us got, were able to get started on putting together the kits and that work will continue this week. So um, I wanna offer a prayer of thanksgiving for that. By way of concern, um, I would ask healing prayers for Mary Ann, who we prayed for last week, right before her open heart surgery. And that surgery we believe was a success and she will be going home in a few days from the hospital. On the other side, I would lift prayers for Sandy's daughter, Renee, who is having open heart surgery tomorrow at Mass General Hospital. Um, I'd also ask prayers for um, Sandy's son, Jeremy, who was in the ER last night and um, is back home now, but um, still looking for some answers for health concerns. Uh, we lift our friend Ben in prayer. Ben fell yesterday and cut his face and the rescue squad had to come and but he's doing okay now but we ask prayers for Ben. Prayers are asked for Cindy and her family as they go through some uh, difficult times and I pray for our friend Elaine who's here with us today in her pray for a relief to her pain and answers from doctors. I'd also of course lift up our nation. Um, we have been through um, a difficult week and uh, a painful one. And so I would uh, hope that as a nation together, we will find a way to um, respond in a way that makes us a stronger and better nation. Um, we are certainly divided. And um, so I hold in prayer all of all of us are those who make our laws and those who enforce our laws and the rest of us citizens whose responsibility it is to um, take care of this country. So um, if you have a joy or concern that you would like to lift up today, unmute yourself and just say who you are so I know if you who that is speaking. Patty. Go ahead. I, just, I have a joy. Um, today is my son Jonathan's 40th birthday. Uh, so I'm just going to celebrate him. <laughs> great. Thank you. Yeah, Kathy. Brian. Yeah, I want um, prayers for a close friend of mine. Um, his name is Mark Roglan, and he's got, he was diagnosed with um, 
this very strange cancer a few months mm -hmm. ago and it's gone up to his lungs now oh. and he's he's a 50 year old guy he's got four kids oh. and he lives in dallas i saw him last week or two weeks ago when i was in dallas okay we will certainly hold mark and his family in prayer others Anyone else? Then I invite you to join me in lifting up these prayers and the prayers we hold within us. O oh God of all creation, water is on our minds this day. We honor the baptism of Jesus himself this today, remembering that he was at once both human and divine and that his baptism brings forth memories of our own or memories passed on to us. We recommit ourselves this day to the power of baptism itself and the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst, which continues to labor within and among and through us with a touch as light as a single raindrop or tear or as powerful as a raging river or a driving snowstorm. Be with us in our celebrations this day. We offer Thanksgiving today for so many blessings. Included in those are our friends at the First Congregational Church in Manchester and their pastor, Chris. Thanksgiving for helping hands or folks who um, come and make, make it possible for us to um, show our concern for our neighbors. And we also celebrate with Patty and her family on the 40th anniversary of Jonathan's birth. May we all continue to be a thanksgiving people every day. For so many we know and know of, life is filled with pain and sorrow that can seem unbearable at times. We ask you, O oh God, to show us how we can best love and support and nurture those friends and loved ones in their time of need. Let us bear your presence in our care of them. We also share in the concern of our nation Today, we especially lift up in prayer, healing prayers, Marianne and Ben, Renee and Jeremy, Cindy and her family, Elaine, Mark and his family. We also are mindful that collectively we are reeling from the events of this week. And so we pray, oh God, for your mercy and your peace. May your abiding love, O God, wash over every one of your people. And then may they float in that place of deep and abiding love. Let us take the reminder of our baptism with us when we go out today into the world. Continuing your work, loving God, showering all those we encounter with the confidence of your ongoing presence in our lives. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, I realized I didn't ring the bell today. So, um, but because I had to move it to do that, apologize for that, but um, I am lifting the offering plate and um, our offerings are symbols of um, what this church means to you what you hope that the church would be capable of doing in the world. And so I'd ask you to consider your gifts and either mail them in um, or uh, do so electronically. Now's the time we're gonna renew our baptismal promises. So if you have your water handy, um, you might wanna draw that near. I've got a bowl here that, um, and let us begin. Our God created, and there will be times where I will ask you questions to be answered in at, with I do. Our God created new life forms and brought them up from the waters of chaos, embraced them and called them good. Jesus, baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist, became living water for us and embraces all of us. Jesus embraces those who are poor, oppressed, marginalized, and all others who come seeking. We follow Jesus 
with our baptism, marking a starting place for new life and new ways of being. We join Jesus in love and service. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to see, feel, and hear again the vows of baptism. Do you renew and affirm the promises made at your baptism? I do. Do you recognize the call of God to be God's people always? I do. Do you embrace the way of Jesus in faith and ministry? I do. Do you accept the nurture of the Holy Spirit who renews your spirit each day? I do. Do you accept and embrace others who seek a liberating faith in God? I do. In renewing your baptismal vows, remember your baptism as a mark of acceptance and welcome into the care of Christ Church, where you may begin again your Christian faith and life. I'd invite you to dip your fingers into your water and um, make a cross on your forehead as a sign of the renewal of your baptismal promises. And join me in this prayer. O oh God, we rejoice in your grace, given and received. We thank you that you claim us, that you wash us, strengthen us, and guide us, that you empower us to live a life worthy of our calling. In the way of Jesus, make us as water in a dry and thirsty world. Establish us to be places of refreshment. Root us and nurture us in love that with all your people that we may rightly and justly serve you. Fill us with your fullness that our lives may overflow in service and love. Amen. I'd now invite Patty to unmute herself as she shares our middle hymn, Shall We Gather at the River? Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal guide forever flowing by the throne of God? On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Thank you, Patty. I'd invite Phyllis now to share our scripture passage for today. Today's scripture is from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. I'm reading from the New International Version. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole of Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was a message. After me 
comes the one more powerful than I. The straps of his sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, and but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. So ends the scripture reading. Depending on the circumstances, the people present, or the reason to explain, when asked about my identity, I often give different answers. To my extended family, I am the oldest child of seven, mother of one, the only Vermonter, and the only one who officially converted from the religion of our parents. To my doctor, I am a middle-aged, fairly short woman with a A-positive blood that takes forever to draw and controlled acid reflux, who has undergone five surgeries in her adult life, starting with a C-section for that one child, and terrible eyesight that has been corrected with glasses since the age of five. To the IRS, I am married, filing jointly, and one who just had her $600 COVID relief money direct deposited into her checking account. To the United States Postal Service, I am a person with a P.O. box who subscribes to The Week, The New Yorker, Vanity Fair, and Christian Century, and receives dozens of solicitations for money from nonprofits around the globe that get shoved into said post office box every month. Most days, I barely give any thought to these identities. I rarely have to write about them or report them to anyone. And every one of you, I know, has multiple identities that make you uniquely who you are. Recommitting to our baptisms, as we just did, offers us the chance, again, to reclaim our identity as God's beloved. That bit of water you marked on your head is not in itself the power. No, the power lies in the reassurance that just as Jesus hears from heaven, you are my child, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. These are also words that started his ministry and named his identity. And it's also true of us. In remembering our baptismal promises, we have the choice of simply going along with what we agreed to or that somebody else agreed to for us, or we can be changed by it. As one myself who had the promises made for me at the age of one month old, I too am in need of reaffirming and reclaiming those long ago promises. On Wednesday, Epiphany Day, we watched in horror as a temple to the ideals of our nation was attacked and desecrated. We were witnesses to violence and fear in a place where our trust as a nation had been placed. The destruction and loss of life in that place that is at the heart of our identity as a nation has left many of us frightened for what is to become of us. How might our identity as beloved children of God be lived out as we respond collectively and individually to Wednesday's events and all that got us to that point. The power of our baptism is in the blessing that we have received in which we are called to pass on. Baptism is not just a one and done event. In remembering it, the responsibility that comes with baptism is also brought home again. We may not like seeing every other one as a beloved child of God, but they too share in that identity. Regardless of all those other parts of their identities, they are first and foremost children of God. We live in a divided nation, and we don't know what our identity is as a country. We've become divided based on political views and ideological priorities, so much so that we can no longer even have a civil conversation with each other. Theologian David Lose 
ask two important questions after Wednesday's events. The first is, can you differ with another person on important issues and still see this person as an American? The other is targeted to those of us who claim the identity of Christian. Can you see someone who differs from you on important issues as a fellow child of God? We may struggle mightily with that challenge. We may fall short, and yet we are still, each of us, the beloved child of God. That means we can try again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And we know that we can do hard things. On her third day at her new job, Rear Admiral Margaret Grun Kibben was sitting in the House chamber as the newly appointed chaplain, the first woman in that position, to the House of Representatives on Wednesday. When the mob overtook the Capitol, she accompanied the frightened representatives and their staff members as they evacuated. She was present with those who had health conditions and a range of abilities and fragile emotional states. Once sheltered, Reverend Kibben offered again the words of Psalm 46 that she had prayed earlier in the day at the opening of that house session. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. She then lifted up prayers for all of them, as well as for those who were at that very time ransacking the Capitol. When asked afterwards about her experience on Wednesday, she explained why it was important for her to be there. Reverend Kibben said, our daily lives are not separate, separate from God's involvement in them. God is very much present and very much has come alongside each and every one of us as we labor in the vineyard. She goes on, if the labor is under siege, God understands the crisis and walks beside us in still waters, as well as in the shadows of danger. This is what Jesus' baptism signifies. That, too, is the identity we have reaffirmed with our baptisms. God with us. Always. Amen. I'd now invite Scott to uh, screen share um, Mary playing Wash O God, Our Sons and Daughters, as we sing along from home. Amidst a noisy world, make way to listen for God. In the busiest of days, find time to listen for God. For in the listening, we finally hear this truth. 
We are beloved children of God, created in love, created for love, created to love. Let us now go to listen and love. Amen. And you can unmute yourself if you'd like to say anything. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Great sermon, Kathy. Thank that you. Very good. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone. Yes, you, you too. Have a great week. Bye. 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 Take care, everybody. Have a good Bye. week. Bye, Carol. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Hey, Kathy. Bye, Jenny. Hey, Brian. What What is happening with Sandy's daughter? I think she signed um, off. Yeah. No. no, Sandy's there. Sandy can tell you. She's right there. Yeah, yeah Sandy. She, Sandy what's, what's going on? She's having heart uh, open heart surgery. The, something about a valve. They wanted to do it a while ago, and she wanted to wait till after the uh, the holidays. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she's scared to death, of course. She remembers 30 years ago when my mother had heart open heart surgery and didn't make it. But, you know, I told her 30 years, a lot has happened. Oh, gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, where, that's where, like the horse and buggy age compared yeah. to what they're doing now. The, the thing is, um, if you're going to be sick, the best place to be sick is Boston. Because yeah. they have the best doctors in the world. Yeah, and, they sent her down uh, there because of to see if they could do it without open heart, but they can't. They need to go in. Yeah, yeah. So is what is her, her what? Is that where she's having it done in Boston? Mass, yeah. Mass General, yeah. Mass General. Yeah. That's where my friend Mark is um being treated. They, mm. He lives in Dallas, but they couldn't treat it down down there, so they sent him up to Mass General. Mass General apparently is the only place in the world that can treat that kind of cancer. Mm -hmm. So oh. she's in good hands. Yeah. And uh, sure. are you going to go out there, or is no? I can't see her. Her uh, Ariel, her oldest daughter, is going to be all the not all of them. A lot of the kids and grandkids have been with her since Friday. They got a uh, Airbnb to stay. Yep. yep. But uh, Ariel's going to stay. The rest will be coming back because Ariel has friends in the Boston area. How long is she going to be in the hospital? I don't know. A week or two, I think. Oi, oi, oi. Mm. Yeah. Billy was in uh, Brigham and Women's with an open heart surgery twice. Mm. And um, he, he did really well down there. It was and and that and it was for a valve mm -hmm. oh that's what hers yeah 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 well sandy i'm sad to hear this and, yeah, and you're in my 50. thoughts oh, and just your turned. son what has happened to your son this is i don't know he passed out they took him to the er and they airlifted him to albany very fast Oh, and yeah. he, he was able to come home this morning, and they don't know what caused it. It's the second time it's happened, and whatever it is, they it scares them when they get him to the hospital. They, yeah. <laughs> so oh, I don't know. Yeah. His aneurysm yeah. seems to be okay. They checked that. Hmm. They well, did. I'm uh, thinking of. I'm thinking of you all. Hi, Becky. Hi, Brian. I love I love walking past your house. You you you're all decked up for Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see. Um, oh, it cheers you. me up whenever I walk mm -hmm. past there. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you during the week, Sandy. I'm right. thinking of you and your two kids. Thank you. Prayers, prayers. I'll let yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So send us send us all an email. Yeah. Um, about Renee. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, -bye. bye okay. everybody. Bye, everybody. I thought I stayed up.